Hello there, boys and girls. I'm Magaboo Willoughby, and I'm a magical gnome who lives in the land of Firmishlam. There my fellow gnomes and I work in the chocolate mines, looking for Reese's Pieces and candy canes. Ha! Surprise! It's really me, your science teacher, Mr. O'Brien. I know you guys are shocked, and you may be asking yourselves, how is it that Mr. O'Brien was able to pull off such a convincing disguise? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was able to do so using a little bit of what I know about waves, their properties, and their behaviors. You too can pull off an amazing disguise if you watch the rest of this video and learn a little bit about these interesting wave behaviors. So, regardless of whether or not we're talking about a longitudinal wave, or a transverse wave, or a surface wave, um, waves like to behave uh, in a certain way. Okay, primarily they like to travel in straight lines. So I'm gonna use light as my wave to demonstrate this for you guys, okay? I've got a piece of a little bottle of white out here, okay? And if I set this down and I bombard it with waves of light here, okay? You're gonna notice that we have a shadow appearing on the opposite side of the object as my light source. And that makes sense. I don't think that's gonna be much of a surprise to anybody here, okay? But let's look a little bit at why. Okay, you can kind of see, even though my wave is a transverse wave, it's got this little kind of S shape, it's more or less traveling in a straight line, okay? And it's doing that in a bunch of different directions. So it's sending out wavelengths basically in as many different directions as it can, okay? But the waves that are traveling directly into my whiteout bottle here, okay, they are not just gonna somehow magically come out in a straight line and then turn around and come back and, you know, light this section over here. Okay, we don't see that, right? What we see is, again, that they're just gonna continue to travel outwards like this. And since they're not just gonna bend around all on their own, they're gonna travel in a straight line, anything that's, in the same line as my light source and my object and what's behind it is gonna be dark, okay? Because none of those waves, like I said, are just gonna curl around here all on their own. Okay, so there are a couple of instances in which waves do not travel in a straight line, okay? Sometimes uh, waves will strike an object and they'll bounce off of it, okay? When a wave bounces off of something, we call that a reflection. And you guys are probably familiar with that word from when we're talking about when light bounces off of a mirror and we can see a reflection, okay? Waves can also not only bounce, but they can be bent, okay? And when a wave is being bent, but it's not bouncing, um, we call that refraction. And I'll explain this a little bit more in just a minute. But let's take a minute here and look at reflection for a moment, okay? So I've got myself um, a light source here. This is going to be our source of our waves, okay, my laser pointer. And essentially what I'm gonna show you guys is when I use this laser pointer, if it hits a shiny reflective object, again, this wave is gonna bounce off of it, okay? So you can see, all right, that laser pointer comes in, it strikes the reflective surface, and it bounces off, okay? It doesn't need to necessarily be a reflective surface if it's not a light wave, right? This could be a sound wave too, right? If I was to yell against like a concrete wall, the sound from my voice would hit that wall and bounce off, creating an echo, okay? So an echo actually is a type of reflection, okay? Another thing that's interesting about reflection is it depends on the angle, okay, that the wave is striking that surface. I've set up this protractor here, okay, with my mirror kind of cutting it right between um, zero and 180 degrees, cutting my protractor right in half, okay? If I hit this thing straight on at 90 degrees, perfectly perpendicular, it's gonna leave at 90 degrees, okay? Because it's bouncing. So you can imagine, right, if I have a bouncy ball here and I bounce it straight up and down, it's gonna bounce straight up and down, 
Same thing with this light. It comes in straight up and down. It's going to leave straight up and down. But if I hit this surface at an angle, okay, then it's going to leave at the reciprocal angle as well. Okay, so if I was to hit this mirror at about a 45 degree angle coming in, it's going to leave at a 45 degree angle in the opposite direction. Okay, if I was to go even st steeper down here, say I come at it from 160 degrees, that's 20 degrees from 180, then it's going to leave at 20 degrees. Again, I'm doing this by hand, so it's not perfect, but about 20 degrees on the other side. There's a lot of cool experiments that you guys can do with reflecting light. So I encourage you, find a mirror or find a little tub that you can make some waves in. See what kind of interesting things you can do with reflecting waves. I don't know if you've ever tried setting up an infinity mirror before, but that's one of my favorite things to do. If you get two mirrors facing one another just perfectly so, and position yourself in between those mirrors, the light will bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, infinitely. And so you may get this appearance almost as if things are going on forever and ever and ever, because again, the light is bouncing off of my two mirrors here, reflecting back and forth in that perfect perpendicular angle for all eternity. Okay, so not only can waves bounce through the process of reflection, okay, they can also bend through a process called refraction, okay? Let's see if I can get this um, to work for you all. Okay, so typically, like I said, waves, they like to travel in a straight line, okay? So if I've got my laser here, you know, it's just gonna travel along in a nice, perfectly straight line, okay? And if it hits something that it can still pass through, okay, so this light wave can pass through this glass, okay, you can see it's still going through and hitting my hand here, okay, but the glass is more dense than the air is around it, okay, so when light goes through this prism, it was traveling at a certain speed, then it hits this higher density glass, and it slows down, okay, and when it slows down, it's going to make it change angles ever so slightly and refract, uh, so let's see if I can get this lined up for you guys and we can show you what this looks like here. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay. All right. So you can kind of see this fairly well, but normally, okay, the light would be traveling at a perfectly straight line just like that, okay? But what happens is, okay, it's traveling along it hits this glass and slows down, which causes it to bend and move at a slightly different angle. Okay, then when it exits the glass, okay, into the lower density air, it speeds up again, changes its angles ever so slightly and passes on. Okay, and you get this slight distortion. That's why my face looked so funny when I was being a gnome earlier. Okay, was the way that that light was bending as it passed through that piece of plastic that I was holding up in front of my face. All right. I'm gonna show you one more cool demonstration where we can use that concept of refracting or bending waves um, to make a cool optical illusion. All right, folks, last thing I wanna show you today is a little magic trick that you can use uh, using this idea of refraction or bending light. So I've got myself just a beaker of ordinary water here. Okay, let me set that up for you. Okay, and you may notice that things look strange when the light is coming through the water, okay? Again, water is a different density than the air around it. So when the light waves from my shirt pass through that water, they get bent, they change angles, and they change speeds, okay? Which is why things look strange, right, when you're looking through the water here, okay? So there's a little magic trick you can do, okay? I've got myself just an ordinary piece of paper that I've written an arrow on with the word right, since it's pointing to the right. And take a look at what happens when I have the light that's passing from this paper refract through the water. All right, what do you think? Pretty cool. 
So why did it completely change directions like that? Well, we'll get into that a little bit later on in this unit, okay? But right now, let's just chalk it up to magic. I'm just kidding, of course. You guys know that there's no such thing as magic. Unless, of course, that is... Live in the land of Furbisham!